let's make 2023 your best business year yet. Now it all starts with a really good marketing plan and a strategy. I'm going to be listing my top five business tips to get your business booming for next year. Are you ready? So first up, what social media platform do you want to be on? Now this is really, really important for lots and lots of different reasons. Firstly, you don't want to spread yourself too thin and just on be on every platform. What you do want is to be really, really good on one social media platform. But maybe two if you've got extra spare time, but you can't spread yourself too thin. It's a really good chance also to get to know your followers, to really engage with the community, to build that trust factor and to educate your and nurture your followers so then they are more likely to buy. And you just can't do that if you have all these different platforms you're trying to keep on top of as well as run a business and look after a family and look, yeah, as you know, it goes on and on. So you really want to talk to your followers and just have general chit chat conversations. And I just love having a talk with people who are generally interested in my business and I can share really good value. Does it lead to a sale? Well, look, not always. Um, by far from it, my conversion rate is around the 5% on my web page and around about the 50 to 80% on a DM. But when I say conversion rate, that might not be to a sale, that might to be to one of my free downloads perhaps. I just want to provide value for the community and help you grow your business. Also hence why this YouTube channel. And as you can see, look, I've just come back from the beach, got some whole lot of inspiration and have to let you know my five top tips for this year. All right, so the next one. If we're talking about Instagram, we'll look, let's face it, that's my preferred method of getting my word out to the public. YouTube is fantastic, but I do choose Instagram because it gives you that one-on-one -on -one conversation through DMs that you can have with your community of people. Now you have to set what your goal is going to be for the year. What do I mean by goal? If you have a business that you're just starting to get off the ground, do you have a big account or a small account? My guess is you've probably got a small account and that's fine, but your goal for next year will more than likely to be to grow your account, to grow your followers, in order to then grow your business. If you already have that large account, your goal might be slightly different because you don't necessarily need to grow your account at that same rate. In fact, what you rather do is nurture your current community and make sure that they really engage with you, they know you, they trust you, and then they will be buying from you because that's how the process works. So with your goal in mind, is it for growth or is it just for nurturing and it could also be somewhere in the middle. That is going to depend on what your strategy is going to be. In 2023 what I would like you to do is pick your goal. If it's a goal for growth what you need to do is get your ideas and your reels out to the public view and to do that reels are a perfect way of engaging and with new eyes and getting in front of new people. Now don't forget you can watch my video all about reels which I'll talk about a bit later but reels and growth go hand in hand. Now if you want to nurture your community which you'll need to do anyway but if your goal purely is to nurture you probably won't rely so much on reels and instead have some hugely valuable posts and also a whole lot of stories and story highlights and then that way you can really get your behind the scenes and your knowledge out for your niche in front of your particular community. What it also allows you to do is really engage with your current followers, share your thoughts, share your information and just really get to know them and then vice versa they'll get to know you. So 2023 might also be the year that you start an email list. Now you've probably heard a lot of big name marketing gurus go on and on about an email list and it's for a really good reason. With Instagram and any other social media platform for that matter you are borrowing the real estate. So basically your list of your followers are owned by Instagram. Now that is really really important to note. If something happens to your account or it gets shut down for whatever reason because look this stuff does happen, you basically don't have a leg to stand on. 
<laughs> so an email list is fantastic because it is a list that you own. If you change software, you can take that list with you. Very, very important. And 2023, I would highly suggest to start having a look into it. There's lots of free options out there. Um, my suggestion, start with something like MailChimp. I personally use Active Campaign. I think they're really, really intuitive and just a fantastic platform, but have a bit of a look into it. Start building your list and start nurturing, sending some weekly, monthly newsletters. So regardless of the objective for your goal on your social media platform for next year, my guess is it will also be a revenue goal. Because face it, a business is not a business if it's not making money. What are you going to do for your revenue goal? You need to pick a figure and go, right, this is my dream goal. And then you need to sit back and start thinking, if I want to get to this dream goal, what are the steps that I need to put in place in order to achieve that? So let's say, for example, I have a candle business and I want to try and get to my target goal of $10,000 for next year. Going, that's fantastic. First thing you need to say, well, is that profit or is that revenue? If I want to make $10,000, how many candles do I need to sell? So if I say, for example, I make $10 profit per candle. So if I want to make $10,000, 10,000 divided by 10, 1,000 if my maths is correct. Uh, comment below if I stuff any of this maths up, by the way. But for intensive purposes, I must sell a thousand candles for next year if I want to hit my target goal. So the next question you need to ask, so we're sort of reverse engineering the process here. The next question you need to ask is, how am I going to sell those thousand candles? So say, for example, on average, your customer buys two candles. So now you need to say, well, I need to sell to 500 people. Okay, well, now we're getting somewhere. Then you might break it down even further. How many candles do I need to sell per month, even per week? Now, if it's per week, I could go, well, 500 divided by 52, what's that, about 10 candles per, or 10 people per week? Okay, well, then I need to know, I need to make 10 sales per week in order to hit my revenue goal. So, it goes on from here. If I need to sell to 10 people, how many people do I need to get my product in front of? Now, this is the question and this is the part that a lot of people, a lot of business owners leave out. If I sell to one person, you may have to show your product to 10 people, 100 people, what your conversion rate is. Now, conversion means somebody that looks at your product versus somebody who actually buys your product. So if you have 100 people look at your product and one person buys, that's a 1% conversion rate. So you need to try and get a bit of an idea on your figures and how many people will look versus buy. That way, if you say I've got a conversion rate of say 10% and I need to get, which means 10 people in every 100 buy or one person in every 10 people buy. Uh, simple mathematics, how did you go at school there? Look, I know it might sound a bit confusing, but sit down with a pen and paper and go through these figures. So if I then need to get my product to sell to 10 people per week, and I have a 5% conversion, well that means I need to get my product in front of 50 new eyes for that week. So how are you going to do that? Now we have a measurable target that we can nut it down per week. I mean, you can do it for monthly if you want to. I personally like week because it gives you a, a finite size. <laughs> so I need to get my product in front of 50 new people. Are you going to use organic strategies or paid strategies or a bit of both? It's a common question. I would suggest, look, it depends on your budget because that will all come out of the bottom line. So organic is typically the way to go because, look, it doesn't take any money. It takes a heap of time, but not money. So in order to get those 50 people to see your product, you need to know, you need to now think of, mm, okay, 
am I going to go for my real strategy or have I got a really big following to start with and I'm going to be doing a lot of nurturing so a lot of people will be seeing my stories which may have links to my sales page how many people will likely click onto my sales page and it goes on from there but you have a measurable strategy in place in order to achieve your revenue goal does that make sense comment below if you want me to go through any of that in a lot more detail because there's a lot of numbers involved p.s yeah if my maths don't quite add up then do comment below and i apologize for that but you get the idea you need an end goal in place work your way backwards to work out how many people need to view your product it comes down to data it comes down to simple numbers and it's no longer a guessing game. It might be an educated guess at the start, but once you've got your data in place, you can then improve on it. Okay, so the next topic that I want to cover is your content, because we all know that content creation can be, well, <laughs> difficult at times. So next thing, I want to get your pen and paper out again, and let's work out a very quick content creation plan. First thing you need to do is put your 12 months on your page write in all those months where something's going to happen for example a black friday promo maybe a, a christmas promo a new a new year's maybe you have a birthday and you want to do a promotion at that stage whatever it is write it down so you've got something to go on then you can work out how you're going to fit all the little nuts and bolts around those particular promotions so say if you want to do a sale plan for it so you don't do too many to close all of that sort of stuff the next thing I'd like you to do is choose 12 topics that correlate to your niche. So for example, we'll go back on the candles scenario. If I have a candle shop, I don't by the way, but if I were to have a candle shop, I'm month one in January might be over here in Australia, it's nice and you know, summer and warm. It might be to do with ocean scents, and maybe a little bit of decoration around my house and how I can set it up. So the theme might be you know, ocean, summer breeze. And that gives me, for the month of January, a rough starting point of all the content I'm going to create, or at least most of it, will be around that particular topic. It gets your ideas, it helps with the inspiration. So you can just go, okay, what am I going to post about? Oh, that's right, the scents in my candle are called sea breeze so therefore i'm going to be talking a little bit about that and why it's fantastic it helps you relax think of the beach all that sort of stuff but it gives you an idea so you've worked out what your goal is to grow your social media account there you go strategy number one in place you've worked out what your revenue goal is and then what you need to put in place to achieve that revenue goal you've got your content creation ideas for each of the months and your promo already sorted nutted out it's fantastic it's because it, moving on into 2023 you already got the roadmap in front of you it makes it so much easier it takes all the pressure off well look a lot of the pressure off because you know what to do when to do it in your content creation calendar I want you to also work out how often you're going to post and when to post because if you write it down it's more likely to happen and you'll get that consistency going that the algorithms really really favor now on top of all of that you do need to allow a little bit of flexibility in order to modify your plans if needed if you notice something's just not working look stick with it for a little bit don't swap and change instantly but what you will need to do is just be allow yourself to be a bit flexible so you can tweak it slightly here and there whenever necessary but if you want 2023 to be your best year ever in your business write down this roadmap that we've just talked about, go back and re-watch if there's anything that doesn't make any sense, comment below if you want me to go over anything in a little bit more detail, but what I'd like you to do for now, so watch this video here, it's all about how to increase your reels views and engagements and basically get your views, your views, your reels out into as many eyes as possible so you can grow your account, so you can grow your business.